Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. So, in today's video, we're going to be going over the Mighty SS. Now, first of all, I really have to thank you guys so much because this car just blew up on uh, on YouTube, and the videos are like thirty-five thousand views now. It's it's absolutely insane. So let's get out and have a look at the car because it's a bit windy outside. So I'll try and keep it as short out here. But for you guys that don't know, this is my two thousand and four Holden VY Commodore SS Series Two manual six speed leather interior and we ended up picking this car up for seven thousand dollars so it's pretty cheap in today's market but it does have very high kilometers so it's a 400,000 k's but the car has been very well looked after for the kilometers that are on it and in today's video we're specifically going to go over what's really wrong with it we sort of briefly went over it in the last video and we picked it up but we're going to show you today exactly what is wrong with this car and the seven thousand dollars sort of gets you this day and age and one of the problems we're going to fix in today's episode so let's start from the inside so seven thousand dollars four hundred thousand kilometers let's have a look what the interior is like so sit with me guys so this is the seating position and the interior is actually really well looked after first obvious things you'll see is the steering wheel is worn uh, on the sides uh, this side isn't too bad more so this side and the top's pretty well gone so you can get these wheels re-trimmed, uh, worst case find another wheel, um, but this has the uh, the red stitching, can't really see because it's that worn. And the gear boot itself is actually in really good condition, which is uh, which is great. And the handbrake lever too, I reckon they've probably been replaced at one stage. And the gear lever, not too much wear on it, which is good for 400,000 Ks. Now the seats, the seats are in really, really good condition for 400,000 Ks. The only sort of blemishes are uh, obviously getting in and out the driver's side here started to separate and uh, crack here. But other than that, the leather interior is actually in immaculate condition. The guy actually put brand new headlining in it too before me. He put brand new headlining, so it looks really nice. And as you can see, our, our cluster, so 408,000, almost 409, and still going strong. So everything works. Uh, all the electrics works. Aircon is ice cold as well, so that's really good. Um, all the climate control works. Uh, horn, we've got a button here that's broken on the volume up, but the rest of them are fine uh, So we're gonna get a new button the cruise and everything works amazing um, All your lights and everything everything works Glass holder But that's pretty much it for the interior like you know all the carpets are good uh, center console is really good uh, I don't even know what this is. I think that's for the back of the seat. It looks like it's been all chewed up it even comes with some cologne Mmm Center console lid is good, not much wear, because you sort of rest your arm on it as you're driving. I didn't really go over it in the last episode, all the door cards and stuff. The door cards are actually really nice. Um, it is broken at the bottom of the speaker cover thing, so I think we can replace that. But the door cards themselves are actually really nice. And uh, here's the back, it's all the carpets. Got my bag in there for my camera gear in it. Uh, parcel shelf, got the baby restraints on there. Yeah, everything's looking pretty good in here. Um, it's that brand new headlining. Hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad out here, so we can have a look at the outside. The one thing you can really see on the front is that the front bumper bar has been significantly sandblasted just from all those kilometres. So it gets these chips and then the clear just starts to peel out from there on. So you get all these marks and that. So we really have to rectify this and just get the bar painted. That's not too much of an issue, but um, you know all the lenses and everything are really good on the on the lights and that. It's got rear whistles. Um, yeah, so not too bad the bonnet is a little bit chipped i think we can get away with that and just um polish it up so coming around to the side here you can see on the front alloys it's only the front alloys for some reason but the rear ones are fine they've sort of just faded um they're going to be pretty easy just to rough up prime and paint them again so i'll paint all four i reckon they've been just crappily painted before this you can see guys i paint this car is actually really good um for a sting red um obviously coming to the back the most common thing on these cars are the door handles start to go someone's tried to touch that one up you'll see more on the rear ones now my dad um used to paint these back in the day and apparently they don't really prime them properly from holden so uh apparently it was only the vyvts uh, sorry vyvz's so yeah that's one thing that's really annoying but you can see the rear alloys are in really good shape really good shape got the nice red back exhaust tips on it it sounds really nice and we have a muck, a muck, <laughs> a mark on the bar here, and something's hit it, like a trailer or something's hit it. So one there, 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 and obviously on the back there as well. So we're going to have to repaint the whole rear bar. That's fine. The rear bar looks a little bit more faded than the boot and everything. So I reckon this car's probably had a blow over once in its life. 
Um, I can't really see any hard edges when I open it, but um, you never know. But yeah, the wing's gone too. So wing, pretty common for the wings to go on these. Uh, all the plastic parts, the paint, paint fades first, and then the rest of the car sort of goes with it if you don't save it. But yeah, coming on this side, this side's really good. You can see those beautiful chrome SS badges and the paint on this side's really nice. Door handles on this side gone too. And the roof and everything is immaculate, the bonnet, guard, everything's good. The front of this guard needs to be rectified, it's all chipped, so might have to paint the, probably that guard and that bonnet, uh, sorry, that, that guard and that bar. So coming into the boot, don't mind the crap that we went for a Bunnings run the other day, but um, everything is pretty good, just needs a clean. Uh, everything's in here, it's got, I don't even know what that is, it looks like the, that looks like a, a cover for the toe plug thing that was on it. As you can see, this is the toe plugs in there somewhere because the car did have a toe bar on it. Uh, one funny thing about this car actually is when I took the toe bar off, it's a huge toe bar on these, the person, they're, they're a two-piece toe bar and the person before me, I don't know who did it, um, actually welded the toe bar together so it was a pain in the ass to get off, my goodness. But I don't know if that's factory deadening there or someone's put dynamite or something on it. Uh, factory tool kit in there. Well, that's pretty much it. But yeah, we didn't get the... That's loose. We didn't get the uh, alloy spare. So a lot of these cars would come factory with the alloy spare. So I'm going to try hunt another SS alloy for it. Um, but inside the boot here is all really nice. First thing I checked when I got it home and that was just checking all the, the seam sealer and everything on the beaver and that. So everything looks really good. Uh, inside, all good. Didn't really show you guys any last time. So there's a bit of a glimpse. All right, so the engine bay in this car is really, really nice. It's just all, you know, simple and it's all factory OEM. Nothing's really been touched. I put the engine cover on it because I had a spare one. Would like to put an OTR on it. Uh, that'd be good just to open it up a little bit more. Everything's pretty good. There's not really much oil residue on this engine for 400,000 Ks and it runs freaking pristine. Let's turn it on and listen to it. And you guys can hear what a 400,000 kilometer alloy sounds like it does have a little bit of a noise at the front from the idler but it goes away after a while i think it's that one right there yeah but when that noise goes away it's dead quiet so i'll probably order uh two new idlers because they got two of them here it at the back sounds really good now i was driving this car before There you go, noise is gone. Yeah, it actually runs quieter than my LS that's in my GU. And that's got way less kilometers. So who knows, this engine could have been swapped. Um, but otherwise it's a very well looked after 400,000 kilometer LS. So what I think I'll do now guys, is I've got a bit of a surprise. Um, so we'll chuck it in this and we'll go home, chuck it in this vehicle and hopefully it makes it a much better car to drive. But yeah, you can listen now, it's just dead quiet now. <sighs> All right, so now that we are back at the house, one thing I really want to show you guys is, uh, so this gearbox, uh, that's one thing I forgot to say is, uh, gearbox is a little bit noisy. Uh, we know that um, it's a throw up bearing um so you, when you put the clutch in you can sort of hear the noise go away clutch out noise comes on it's like a typical thrust bearing noise but uh one thing i hate about it is how floppy the gear shifter is uh t56s are known for being floppy just like t5s and it's never good to be floppy and limp uh you know nice you know hard throw is what you want it's always better to be hard than limp so we have a solution for this so let's go have a look at what we got so coming to the skyline over here, our shelf, we have a present from Cube Speed. So they make a lot of like billet shifters and uh, they do coilovers and stuff now, a lot of different parts for vehicles and they're an Aussie company and they have sent me this nifty little thing. This is a, I've already sort of had a look at it out of the packet, but this is a billet shifter, short throw shifter for the T56 gearbox, which is gonna replace Floppy McGee over here. 
So I want to give a massive thanks to the guys at Cube Speed for sending me this out. Um, I've actually got their Cube Speed shifter in the 180 here, and I absolutely love it. Not even a word of a lie, guys. This shifter really changed that car, and I hope it changes this one. And there's a cool little backstory to uh, how they did this shifter. So, the um, thing I like about this company is they're just not trying to give me a product just to flog off to you guys. They actually sent me a cool little backstory. I've had a good little chat with the guy about cars and stuff like that. And um, he actually told me, so reading the email now, um, so they spent a lot of time developing this short shifter. So the guy that had in the project uh, had a design apprenticeship in Rolls-Royce. He was in the aero engine division and he was over 65 years old when he did the design for these guys. So, so a massive legend for designing a great product and helping uh, engineer things like these to make these cars feel much better. So it's amazing all the development that goes into something so small like this, just a shifter, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really, really excited to chuck it in. They have sent me a couple other stuff, so I'm gonna open the package. All right, guys, so here we have the shifter, and they've also sent me a brass bush, and uh, obviously this is gonna sit inside the gearbox for the cup to sit in. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. But um, I've been reading the instructions, very easy to follow, thank God, because some of these things I get, it's so hard to understand, but having an Aussie company, um, it's very easy to understand all the instructions. I mean, also the bolts here as well, but the only issue is I have today is I'm running out of time and I have to actually drop the gearbox down slightly to get to the, I think it's the front two bolts that sit up the front there and I'm running out of time. So what we'll do is we'll come back either tomorrow or Sunday. God, I have no time these days. Um, <laughs> Cause tomorrow I'm out full driving all day with this thing. And then Sunday I've got a car show in the morning and then work, so. Monday, we'll have to bring the car in the garage, get it up on stands, and I think we're just going to drop the gearbox down ever so slightly just to get the front bolts off the shifter. So, not too hard. I'll show you guys how to do that. So, we'll come back in a couple of days' time and make this car a lot cooler. Well, guys, it's a couple of days later. I'm back in the car. We have it in the garage and Mighty Skyline next to us. I'm going to start pulling apart the interior. I've got the car jacked up in the air on stands. And um, one thing about these shift knobs is you have to sort of twist them and then pull like that and they come off. A lot of people smack themselves in the face with it, so don't do that. <laughs> um, and then yeah, we just need to literally pull this center console out. So under this little ashtray thingamabob. Right down the back there, you can just see in the top right hand corner, right there, there's a Phillips head. So we're gonna undo that and that shall remove our center console, sort of pull up, on, pull up on him, yank up on this bastard, and then all this should sort of pop out the way, like that. And we're left with our shift boot, which sort of just clips in to these little clips. Off your pop, please. It's stuck on, there we go. Just be gentle. And here is our shift assembly thing so to get all this off um, so we're going to undo these two little little bolts here and take this shifter out and then underneath of these uh, studs for all this uh, assembly here what we'll do is we have to uh, go underneath after this and lower the box down slightly just so we can get to the the front bolts and the shifter a lot easier we'll have all the access to get to those front bolts and then we'll come back when we're under the car okay i hope you guys can see pretty well What's going on? Sorry about the construction noise in the background. They've freaking been going all day. We have to lower this box very, very gently down. There's some bolts at the top there I've got to get to, but I've got to drop the box down a little bit. So what we're going to do, I've already done it here off camera, is there's these little legs that sort of bolt under the sides of the exhaust that just sort of help stabilize the exhaust. Um, so I've undone them. They're two 15 mils, the two bolts on this side, and then two here. And what I have to do now is our cross member bolts, which is, uh, four 16 millimeters and then once we uh, crack them I'll get the jack under here and then I'll pull the bolts out and we'll lower the box very gently so good luck to me trying to crack these under here um, with you guys right there but uh, not a lot of wiggle room but see how we go okay that was my um that was my elbow going there that's all right don't need that you probably can't see because my arm's in the way fuck's sakes oh, sorry guys I gotta it's the only point I can get leverage Two, oh, three, and four. Oof. Okay, now they're all cracked. 
I'm gonna get the jack in here, pull all these out, and then we're gonna slowly uh, drop the box down so we've got more access to the shifter plate up there. All right, now that's done. Let's see if she drops down a bit. Just do very slowly, like that. Just enough. That should give us some room. Like that. Let's have a look how much room it's given us. Oh yeah, shift has dropped considerably lower. Down. And yeah, that should give us some access to get those bolts out through here now with a shifter. Or with a ratchet, sorry. Gosh, so much easier to drop the box. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to get... So there's two uh, studs up the top here that takes this uh, rubber thing off. Uh, this thing's pretty pretty munted anyway. <laughs> And then um, that will give us access to, to get into the uh, the body, the shifter body, and undo the four main bolts that holds it all together. Oh, guys. <laughs> so I started undoing the four bolts at two o'clock, and this is the time now. So those ones at the top were so hard to get cracked. Like, oh my God, they were the tightest things in the world. I couldn't get this uh, plastic thing off, so I just drilled two holes straight through it to get to the bolts. <laughs> so I can pull this whole freaking assembly out now. And this all should just pop out now. Oh, goodness. Uh, we're going to clean all this surface up. I'll get some needle nose pliers, get that bush out, replace it with our solid one. And clean up surface. It's already got a gasket on there, I think. Yeah, it's got a gasket on there, but they uh, recommend to use some RT RTV. So I'll put some RTV over it. And yeah, get the new bolt tree to go in and Bob's your uncle. God, that was a pain. Oh, it's never taken me this long to change a shifter, guys, but... That's uh, part of doing it in the car. Um, at least we could drop the gearbox to get some room. So now I have my uh, solid bush in there. Put a little bit of RTV around the casing. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a clean, but I'm gonna get ready to get the billet shifter in there. Thank God. Oh, the new one. And our old one. So as you can see, the billet shifter comes out on S and it just looks so much neater. At least uh, the silicon will sort of mate on that surface there and keep the gearbox all from coming out. That looks so cool. Let's sit in the car. Well, as soon as I put you guys on the console, you roll forward, fall off. But um, I'm gonna wrestle this in and show you guys when it's all in. Look at that. How much better does that look? <laughs> I haven't actually had a feel, so I'm gonna get first hand of the shifter. Hopefully it's gonna, oh, oh. Oh my God, what a difference already. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, it's so solid. Look at that. <laughs> oh, it feels unreal. Fantastic. <laughs> what a difference. God, the shifter before was so sloppy. And with that brass bush in there. Oh, it feels amazing. I can't wait to drive it. <laughs> God, I've been going. Look at the time now, 3.42. I started doing this at like, what, 1 o'clock, one thirty. So all the factory stuff in this car was just buggered so it took me forever i'm going to double check all the bolts are tight uh so the main four bolts that go here and then we're going to um set the uh the shift stops we probably see there's four smaller allen bolts under the shifter and on top so they stop uh, for you from overthrowing if you're ripping gears so i'm going to adjust them so there's just a tiny gap behind them so you can't um yeah overthrow when you change and then we're going to slap all this back together and take it for a spin so tighten these bolts up jack her up put all the cross member back on and get ready to test oh thank god thank god okay so all the underneath has been done again gearbox is back up and bolted in and now we have the final touch on the interior guys so much better and then in neutral oh my god the stiffness before it was like <laughs> oh i can't wait to drive it all right so that's all the interior done. I'm just going to put this screw in the front here and then we'll lower the car down on the stands and see how much better it feels. And you wouldn't even know one's in here. It's all hidden. All right, guys, we're all done. It feels so freaking good. <laughs> so she said, all right. Start the beast. Went to reverse nice and easy. I, I, hopefully there's nothing behind my car. I didn't check properly. <laughs> Uh, Skyline. Say hello, Skyline. Hello. All right. All right, let's go in the first. I 
feeling good. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, that feels amazing. I'm gonna put these windows up. Oh my god, what a difference. Third. Try all the gears. Fourth. Fifth. And I'll try six, but I'm up a hill, so it'll probably bog. Quick sixth. And sixth gear. Beautiful. Back to third. Oh, that feels unreal. <laughs> Dude, it actually feels like a race car now. It's so good. That legit feels like a proper sports car now. It was so floppy before, it just didn't feel really good. Okay, second. Let's give it a bit. That feels amazing. See, small differences like this can just really liven up a car, just a shifter. Now, when I put the, um, the Q-Speed shifter in my 180SX, it was such a big difference, uh, like massive, massive difference, especially like going through the mountains, even drifting, just grabbing the next gear just felt so much better, no slop. Uh, let's pull her back in. It's so windy today, guys. So freaking windy today. I'll pull her slightly into the garage. Coming back home after that drive, I want to drive the car more and more now because it <laughs> feels freaking fantastic. Now guys, if you want to get one of these for yourself, uh, head to the description below. Um, they've also set up a discount code with 10% off. Go grab one for your VY, uh, VT. I think it's just T56 from VT to VZ. So, oh, what a difference. So that's one thing we fixed on this car to make it a bit better. And I think the next thing we're going to do, oh, I'd reckon is probably paint work. Painting up the alloys, getting it all, all schmick again and then uh, doing the door handles and the front bar and stuff like that. So that's everything wrong with my $7,000 SS Commodore. Oh, we'll just get another pan. Here's the two red beasts together. <laughs> One last look at her, guys. Oh, love it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go check out QSP's website, grab yourself a shifter, and help support people that support my channel. Thanks for watching. Go out there and find a cheap SS and thrash it. <laughs> See everyone. Take care, look after yourselves. Bye-bye.